your brain doesn't work the way you think it does. Most people consider themselves to be rational individuals who can take in the details of a situation and form a conclusion. They can then communicate that conclusion to people around them. This is something that everyone is totally capable of. But what if I told you that for the most part, this isn't our go-to thought process? Our go-to thought process is something that happens much more on autopilot. When you detect the tone in someone's voice, when you flinch back from pain, the fact that you can't help but understanding the words on a giant billboard as you're driving down the road. These are things that you don't really have conscious control over. This is called System 1. System 1 usually works just fine for us on a day-to-day -day basis to keep us alive. It's usually only when presented with info that contradicts the conclusion System 1 makes that System 2 our critical thinking skill comes into play. The problem is, if we aren't careful, this overlap can lead us to false conclusions. I've got a few word problems. Some of you may be familiar with them to help explain what I mean. The first one, it takes 10 printers, 10 minutes to produce 10 booklets. If you have 35 printers, printing 35 booklets, how many minutes does it take? I bet, like most people, your initial answer was 35. 35 minutes. That's not correct. The correct answer is 10 minutes. As long as the amount of printers and the amount of booklets remains the same, the amount of time required doesn't change. Number two. There's a pond that is slowly being covered by lily pads. Every day, the amount of lily pads on the lake doubles. On the first day there's one, on the second day there's two, on the third day there's four, on the fifth day there's eight, so on and so forth. On the 30th day, the pond is completely covered with lily pads. How many days did it take for half of the pond to be covered? I bet you a lot of you said 15. The correct answer is 29. On the 29th day, the pond was half covered. Working backwards from the full pond, you only have to have the full pond once in order to get to a half-covered pond. Therefore, it's 29 days. And lastly, a phone and a phone case together cost $110. The phone cost $100 more than the case. How much was the case? I bet, like a lot of people, you said 10 bucks. But if that was true and the phone was $100 more than the case, that would make the phone cost $110, so combined it would be $120. The correct answer is five. The case only cost $5, and if the phone is $100 more, that makes the phone cost $105, so together you're at 110 bucks. The economist Shane Frederick administered these questions, granted with slightly different variables, to thousands of university students. Five in six got at least one wrong, and one in three got them all wrong. Even being really good at math didn't guarantee success. The students who were studying math specifically only did slightly better than average. Yet as soon as you explain the answer out loud, you see the little light bulb go off, and all you can think about is, well, how did I not see that before? Even in your day-to-day -day life, have you ever been convinced that someone was mad at you, something you did made them so angry they're never going to talk to you ever again? Come to find out that wasn't true at all, that that person hadn't thought about that interaction again and you had essentially made it all up? I know it's happened to me. So a fairly simple word problems or your basic day-to-day -day social interaction can lead us to false conclusions just imagine how easy it would be to get to those false conclusions with how complex our society is today, with how much information is coming at you all the time. This thought process obviously has its flaws, but keep in mind, this is what gave us the ability to go from harnessing fire to exploring the stars. 
It is our greatest evolutionary advantage. But if we're aware of the inherent flaws in the process, we can stop ourselves from getting to those false conclusions or at least prevent them from happening so quickly or so often. So don't run on autopilot. Always be critical of your surroundings. And remember, you have to use your greatest evolutionary advantage. And if you do that, our potential is limitless. The idea and information for today's show came from two excellent books, Rationality by Steven Pinker and Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. We only just barely scratched the surface on the plethora of information included in these books. So if you found this topic interesting, you should definitely go check them out. If you enjoyed this, please don't forget to like the video Hit the subscribe button and enable notifications, that way you'll never miss the next bit of random knowledge.